you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Father Tom Papazoglakis, and I serve as rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Tuesday of Holy Week. Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ, that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from Paul's letter to the Philippians the third chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind, and if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ, I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Here ends the lesson. Paul now offers his second exhortation, saying Christians are to walk or live lives pleasing to God. He says that to live a life pleasing to God is to share with him in the pursuit of Christlikeness. What he wanted for himself, he also wants for others, so that all who are spiritually mature may share in a mature understanding of what it means to live a life in Christ. According to Paul, one mark of spiritual maturity is a desire to go with Christ. By following Jesus to lead the way, Paul trusted God to make things clear to those who disagreed with him. His point is that the greatest challenge God's people must overcome is to live up to what it means to live in Christ. In this letter, Paul appealed to the Philippians to live up to what they had already attained, namely a righteous position in Christ, sound advice for any generation or time. He warned them not to be misled by false teachers, such as the Judaizers, instead of following the example he had set for them as one committed to a relentless pursuit of Christlikeness. He also commanded their fellow Philippians, who were already models of living such a life. Paul then turned up the heat on the seriousness of his message, saying that to do otherwise is to not only not live for Christ, but to choose to live as an enemy of the cross of Christ. He was so concerned about the Philippian spiritual welfare that this is just one of his many warnings over which he wept in sharing his concerns. To follow false teachers is to be an enemy of God. To be an enemy of God is to continue at one's own peril. And the case can be made that Paul is challenging his readers to look in the mirror to ensure that they are not being misled from within, thinking somehow that their wisdom or understanding is superior or self-sufficient to that which comes from Christ alone. His point is that to do so is to be misled by one's own ego and to one's own peril. The cost of choosing a path apart from Christ is to risk eternal separation from the presence of God in eternal judgment. Let us pray. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturday and 8 and 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, 
join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Thank you.